Hello everyone, Knuckles Up or Michael here, and today I'm back with a brand new video. In this one, I'm back with yet again another narrative related video. You all showed tremendous support on my Edith Finch video, to which I am very grateful. So if you decided to subscribe because of that video, I'm glad you've stuck around. So yet again, this is a video essay for another school project where we have been analyzing interactive narratives in video games as well as the genre of interactive fiction, which was all the buzz about 40 years ago with games like Zork. Now in the summer I will be making videos that are narrative focused games, but not for school projects because it's much more fun when you are not forced to make something by the righteous hand of the law that is the school administration and the dean and the teacher and everything like that. So in the future, expect some more narrative videos coming in the summer and make sure to comment down below what you would like me to talk about. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about Papers, Please, and for the 9 out of 10 of you who have never heard about this game, allow me to explain. Papers, Please takes place in Aristotska, Ar 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 you know, okay, honestly, I'm just going to say Aristotska, but like, I don't even know, I'm Polish, so I sure know how to pronounce a word like that. Aristotska, let's just go with that. A fictional communist country set in 1982. After the lottery job draft, you have been assigned to be an immigration officer at the border. You and your family are moved to an apartment complex nearby, and your job is simply to let those in the country who are allowed in and send away anyone who does not belong in Aristotska. Every day you spend patrolling the border, a new piece of security information becomes standardized. This varies anywhere between making sure foreigners have their entry cards permitting them to come into the country, and even making sure that full body scans are performed on people who might be suspected to have contraband. If you have not played this game yet, stop what you are doing right now and go buy it on Steam. It's pretty cheap, it's 10 bucks or so, then come back and press play on this video. Of course, if you don't care at all, or if you've already played the game, Please, sit back, relax, grab a cup of joe and maybe an Asiago cheese bagel, and let's get the show on the road. So why is this game worthy of narrative praise? Well, let's talk about why the game is worthy of praise in general. The minimal, cold artwork in the game provides an excellent complement to the dark and gritty conditions of the country. The simplicity of the controls doesn't make it too daunting when more security protocols are introduced into the game. The first day, all you have to do is stamp passports and make sure people who are citizens can come in and people who aren't are sent out. You just have to click one button, that's it. But every day as the game progresses, you add more and more into the game, so the fact that there are very simplistic controls makes it easier to grasp the concepts, while at the same time allows you to focus more on doing your job correctly. So for that, I applaud the game. I'd also like to applaud the game on how it forces you to pay attention to every little detail while simultaneously making you perform your job at a quick rate. As the days progress, you have to account for more and more variables to let people into Aristotska. Like if the weight matches up with what it says on their card versus the scale in the immigration office, that they have the proper sex on their name as well as their passport, as well expired documents are all in check, that everything is up to date, everything like this, so on and so forth. You could choose to spend five minutes of in real life time, which believe me is a lot of time in game, on every person but the more passports you stamp, the more money you make for you and your family. But the faster you go, the higher chance you screw up. Let me be the first to tell you that Aristotska does not take kindly to mistakes, as on day four, day four, Four, they threw me in the gulag because my four errors that day were definitely not sufficient to be working at the job. So the first time I played this game, I immediately failed, which was kind of funny, and then I had to start again. You have to find the perfect balance between going fast to pay for your starving family and scouring every meticulous detail for any discrepancy. It's definitely a challenge. This is the last point before I get on to the actual narrative side of things, but I would really like to let this game know that they did a fantastic job actually making it scary. Even though the design is quite simplistic, there aren't any gory graphics, I actually kind of felt scared and a little bit worried while playing this game. It really mimicked communist countries very well when there's a lot of fear and paranoia going around. So now, where this game really shines is from an ethical standpoint. In interactive narratives, there's often a couple choices you must make here or there that maybe help or hinder certain characters, including your own. To this point, I have not played a better game in my life at messing with your levels of empathy than this one. For starters, there are people who wish to lie to cross the border and others who actually fear for their lives and their loved ones' lives. This means that you have to determine who is lying to you and who is telling the truth, which is a hard thing to determine. Not only do you have to play God and decide fate of other people's lives, but you have to think about yourself and your family. While I won't go into vigorous detail for spoiler reasons, there are instances where you must choose to violate protocol to protect what is morally right, or you can deny the safety and well-being of a helpless stranger to get five extra dollars in your pocket which will go towards your family. Sticking your neck out for a traveler could cost your family food for the night. 
I have never played a game that challenged me empathetically like this before, and it was certainly an amazing and eye-opening experience. While the game came out in 2013, let me tell you right now, this Sunday, 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 it's not Sunday when I recorded this, I just wanted to say that, uh, <laughs> that this will be the future model for narrative games in the future. How do I know this? Simple. Let's compare Papers, Please to a game like The Walking Dead, which is a good example of the interactive narrative genre. I may or may not be making a Walking Dead related video in the future. No foreshadowing here. Nudge, nudge. Wink, wink. Anyway, there are three reasons that I believe Papers, Please is the benchmark for the genre. Its diversion away from previous media is the first, the ability to use agency to the fullest extent possible is the second, and the effective masking of the game is the third. I will define all these terms later just in case you don't know what they mean, but those are the three examples that I will be giving for why this game is just so fantastic. As I said earlier, you are playing God. Now when I said that, I meant it. Unlike the vast majority of interactive narrative games out there, Papers, Please has taken video games a step away from previous media and into the future of media. What do I mean by this? Well, for example, when film was created as a medium, it didn't start out with Hunger Games-esque shaky handheld cam running through forests and different angles like that. Instead, films were stationary cameras filming plays. Yeah, people put a camera in front of a stage, like a theater, pressed record on the camera, and there was your episode of The Little Rascals, okay? Until we figured out that you can take the camera out of the stationary position and add in movements and different angles and things like that, and that wasn't until film really became film and what we know as film today. What you are seeing right now in video games is exactly that. Tell me, how do video games tell stories? Three, two, one. You guessed it, it's cutscenes. If you have never opened your third eye, cutscenes are literally just miniature films, just tiny little films or TV shows. Video games have done exactly what films did 100 years ago. Video games are using a different medium to tell their story, and I guarantee you that you have seen this in almost every interactive narrative game you have played. Let's go back to The Walking Dead. When does Lee make 95% of the decisions in season one? During cutscenes. You are given an option, either kill this person, kill that person, agree with this person, agree with that person, and then the story plays out in the cutscene. In Papers, Please, this is completely eliminated. Every decision, regardless of benefits or consequences, is conducted at the hands of you. Yeah you, behind your computer screen clicking on your mouse or trackpad. You are the captain of your own ship. The story is left entirely in the palms of your hands rather than in the grasp of the cutscene. If you make a decision, you see it pan out in real time with the effects and the decisions that you made rather than having a cutscene tell that story for you. Your decisions are not dependent on plot points or multiple characters at the same time threatening you to side with them. This makes the game feel much more realistic and authentic. This leads into the next topic of conversation, agency. What is agency, you may be asking? Agency is defined by Janet Murray in her article titled Agency, is the satisfying power to make meaningful action and see the results of our decisions. This article, by the way, is entirely written about interactive fiction and interactive narrative in the video game world. You feel agency when in The Walking Dead you take side with one survivor over another. Your decision to stay at your location rather than migrate to a safer place, for example, will allow you to understand the extent to which your decision positively or negatively impacted your group of survivors. A commonly used synonym for this is the butterfly effect. The idea that every action you have will directly impact something that happens in the future. You will hear this all the time in TV episodes where people time travel. That's a great example. They'll say something like, if you step on that bug now, 80 years before our current time, in 200 years there will be a huge mega tsunami that wipes out every person on the earth and then the earth gets destroyed and when we travel back in time it causes this huge ripple where we don't exist anymore. Something like that. You've all heard that. You've heard it in Back to the Future. You've heard it in the Family. Family Guy episode where they go to the past. You've all heard it, that one little decision can have such major consequences in the future. Bringing it back to Papers, Please, there is no game with greater agency than this one. You see firsthanded the effects that your decisions have immediately as they unfold. In The Walking Dead, there are cases where you have to save one person or another, or do you? Is it you pulling the trigger of a gun to kill that zombie? No, it's Lee, or in season two or three, it's Clementine. In Papers, Please, you are the judge, jury, and executioner, a game where agency flows from your finger to the passport stamp where you can either deny or allow entry. Papers, Please is one of, if not the most heavily agency stress games I've ever played. This leads back to the idea of ethical problems. Papers, Please is essentially one big example of how agency has created a trolley car thought experiment, the video game. I'm sure most of you have heard of the trolley car experiment, but for those that haven't, allow me to explain. 
train. There are many versions of this dilemma, but here is my example and my iteration of it. You are waiting for a train to arrive at the station, and while standing on a platform, you notice that there are five people tied to the track, and they cannot get up from where they are. At the same time, there is a secondary track with one person tied to it. In front of you is a lever that switches the line from the track with five people to the track with one. Assuming that you don't pull the lever, the train will continue not stopping and kill the five people on the first track. But if you pull the lever, it will change tracks and only kill the one person. I'm sure most of you said yes. As you hear in your mind, five people versus one, you say the outcome is better if there's only one person killed rather than five. Assuming you have no personal attachment to anyone in that situation, the five people are the greater than the one, okay? That's what most people would say. Now, think of this. This is the exact same situation, right? Five people tied to the track, but now there is no secondary track but rather there is an extremely tall and large man standing next to you. Pushing him in front of the train will derail the cart, saving five lives, but the man you pushed will have been killed instantly by the train. Now. Do you push the man or do you let the five die? Now the overwhelming amount of people in this case would actually say no, I'm not going to push the man, as this time you are directly responsible for the blood on your hands. Your decision to physically push someone to their death is significantly more impactful than you just simply turning a lever to save five lives over one. In The Walking Dead, you are pulling the lever to save the five lives over the one, but in Papers, Please, you must push the man in front of the car every single time to stop the train. There is no cutscene or character to push the man for you. External forces in this this game are simply non-existent. Every decision relies in your hands. Whether you choose to be corrupt or clean, kind or mean, the only person that can stamp passports and detain passengers is you. The agency of this game is beyond compare and leads nicely into my third point, masking the character to put you inside the game. In Papers, Please, it is implied that you are a man, as considering your family is a son, mother-in-law, uncle, and wife. It is the assumption that you are a man in the game and you are controlling that man's life, or rather you are living as that man. While it is possible that the character is female, based on communist governments in the past and their history with LGBTQ rights, uh, my best guess is that there would not be a great kindness towards gay marriage or having women in the workplace. I could be totally wrong. This could be a pretty progressive 20th century communist country, but my guess is that chances are you're playing as a guy in this video game. Anyway, this is where the game succeeds. It's placing you in the shoes of an ethically torn man, as I have stated before. A woman will say, my husband is behind me, please be kind. You let the lady through because her passport's correct. A man does not have the proper documentation, her husband, but do you let him through or not? As the wife just passed through and the moral decision perhaps is let the guy through, right? or do you go by protocol and just not let the guy through. This game has done a better job than any game placing you in the shoes of the character because you are literally the character. Masking, as it is known, is the practice of making a protagonist extremely simple to allow audiences of all nationalities and all personalities to place themselves in the shoes of the character. Tintin is commonly recognized as one of the best examples of this, as he has limited facial features and simplistic characteristics, while all other people in the Tintin stories and all the surrounding environment in the stories are just riddled with detail. This technique helps the average Joe, like me and you, you and I, to see ourselves in Tintin, flying across the world to tackle new adventures. Now, while masking is making a simpler character to allow for identification for more people, Papers, Please is extremely unique. There is no character at all. Not once, throughout the stamping passports and detaining people, do you catch a glimpse at yourself in the mirror. You are you. This is why the game does such an effective job at tearing you apart through ethical dilemmas. Because this time, it is not Lee or Clementine pulling the trigger of the gun, but it is you. As I said earlier, you are pushing the man in front of the train tracks. It is much easier to make tougher choices when you do not have your family's lives and your own line at risk. Your ability to see yourself as the customs officer makes it a much greater feat to decide whether you want to be morally right or wrong. Your ability to see yourself as the customs officer makes it a greater feat to decide between right and wrong morally. All in all, this game is fantastic, and I would literally give it a 10 out of 10. It, this has to be the best interactive video game I've ever played in the narrative genre before, and I was actually stunned by it. When my brother told me about it the first time I heard it, it was like several months ago, and I was like, that sounds kind of dumb. All you have to do is click one button, right? But I never thought I'd actually put so much thought into little decisions, and it was mind-blowing. So I would highly recommend this game if you haven't played it. To conclude, there are three reasons why I believe Papers, Please is simply just a benchmark for the genre and where I see the genre heading. Its diversion away from previous media is extremely effective. The ability 
ability to use agency to put yourself in the game as well as masking is absolutely incredible. I could definitely see this format being used for VR interactive narrative games in the future where you put on the goggles and you are literally in the customs booth and you are telling no or yes to people coming through. This could be a very interesting format to see in the future, not specifically with this game for example in a VR format, which would be cool, don't get me wrong, but not specifically with this game, perhaps other games where you literally are the person pulling the gun. Anyway guys, that's all the video I have for you today out of me. I'm tired. I gotta finish the editing right now. This is me signing off. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, drop a like down below. Comment your thoughts on this video. Let me know if you agree, disagree, have any further questions for discussion because I love to talk about this stuff. And subscribe if you are not already subscribed for more content like this. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.